Praise God, everybody. Amen. Do you love him this morning? Hallelujah. How many of you worship him because of who he is? Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. It's just good to see Savannah, amen, worshiping the Lord on behalf of her mother this morning. Hallelujah. When you love him, you've got something to worship him for. Because he's worthy. You don't have to wait till the battle is over. You can shout about it right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you love him this morning? Amen. I love him. I love him. I love him. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, we want to look at two verses this morning, verses 9 and 10. There we will put the pivot for the preachment of the word of God. If you have it, just say amen. amen. Hear the word of the Lord. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not, 2 Corinthians, I'm sorry, 1, 9 and 10. We had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raises the dead, who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. I just want to talk briefly this morning from the thought, God will deliver you. Subtopic would be the tenses of God. The tenses of God. God will deliver you. Then we're going to refer to the tenses of God. A tense is a grammatical category that locates a situation in time. It indicates when that situation specifically takes place. A tense is a grammaticalization of time of reference. And in general, it is understood to have three delimitations of before now, which is the past. Now, which is the present. And after now, which is the future. The three, de the three delimitations of the tenses are before now, now and after now, past, the present, and the future. If you would notice, the benchmark for measuring all time is based on something that is called now. And now is actually a sense of time that exists but does not exist at the same time. <laughs> In other words, now is only now when it is recognized at the moment of now. Because time is always moving. Now is correctly recognized always at that very moment. In practical application, uh, we understand that now then is a temporal utterance of what is. We call it in our day the here and now. It is thus given an absolute tense. To put it another way, now is presently. Now is everywhere. Now is instantly. Now is continually. Now is progressively. 
Now is momentarily. Now is exactly. And now is completely. The Bible speaks of now, my brothers and sisters. It speaks of now in reference to our faith. In the same manner of what we believe. Hebrews 11 and 1 puts it this way. It says, now faith. H have you read that scripture? It, it, it said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Ain't God all right? It's telling you and I that now faith is a faith that is presently. Uh, now faith is a faith that is everywhere now faith is a faith that is instantly it is continually it is progressively it is momentarily it is exact it is complete and it is at work in our lives no matter what i'm going through no matter what i'm facing my faith is present with me no matter what i'm dealing with in life my faith goes everywhere i go no matter how tough things are, my faith is instant in my thoughts. My faith is continually standing through all of the hardships that I face. My faith is progressively reaching forward even though it's hard sometimes. My faith is momentarily, immediately, it is exact, it is complete in trusting in God because Every moment of my life, I'm living in now. Anybody got in and now faith? Now faith says, I don't have to wait till the battle is over. Now faith says, I can shout right now. If anybody asks you what kind of faith do you have, you ought to have enough tenacity and bulldog tenacity to say, I have now faith. I have faith that is right now. I have enough faith right now to move a mountain. I have enough faith right now for that situation to turn around. I have enough faith right now to be healed. I have enough faith right now for deliverance. I have enough faith right now for the victory. I have enough faith right now for a door to open. I have enough faith right now for the window of heaven to pull out into my life i don't have to wait until some future date tomorrow i have it win right now hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah with that understanding we know god is a god of tenses preachers if you'll indulge me a moment god is the god of the past god is the god of the present and God is the God of the future. God is the God of the past because all things began by him. In fact, he's the one that says that he sees the ending from the beginning. Uh, one way we know that God is who he says he is is because he can predict with absolute accuracy what is to come. He's the only one that has prophesied and guess what? Wrote it down to confirm that it will happen just like he said it would. God is God and everyone that wants to be God need to recognize that if you can't call it like it is in the future, you don't deserve to be God. <laughs> If you can't pinpoint, amen, amen, a needle in a haystack 55 million years ahead, you don't deserve to be God. If you can't futuristically call those things which be not as though they are, then you're not God. That tells me this morning the devil ain't God because the devil thought he had me a long time ago, but he didn't see that God had a future for me. Y'all don't hear me. Can I talk about this a little bit? God is the God of the past. He sees the ending from the beginning. Accurately see, prophesying exactly what is to come to pass. His relationship to time is one that transcends and speaks to it and through it. God is the God of the past. 
He is the creator. He's the alpha. He's the first call. He's the necessary being. He is the one and only true God. He's the one that controls history like a man of rain in the horse's mouth. God is beyond time, but he's also engaged in time to fulfill his ultimate purpose. Can I talk for a while? Amen. I'm going to preach in a moment if you give me a minute. When we look at this, amen, when it comes to philosophy of the nature of time, there are essentially two views of time. One of them is the dynamic theory, which is a tensed view, and the other is a static theory, which is the tenseless view of time. It is traditionally said that in the dynamic theory of time, the present is ontologically privileged. In other words, it is the present is better than the past and the future. This would mean to us in the, the dynamic view that the present is the only thing that's really real because the past has happened and it can't be changed. It's over with. You can't do anything about that. The future will happen only if we live to see it. You see, the future is contingent upon something that is called life. And as long as you live, you have a future. But the moment you die, that's the end of your future. So the future is a contingent upon life, and it will happen only if you live to see it. And this is the dynamic theory. But on the other hand, brothers and sisters, there's something that is called the static theory. The static theory holds that all moments of time are equally real. The past is no better than the present. The present is no better than the future. That is to say our perspective of life is based on 2012 because that's where we are. But in 2000 it was the past and 2013 is the future. But when it was 1999 all of 2000, 2012, 2000 2013 and future years were all in the future. So the static theory holds, brothers and sisters, that it is ignorant to think of one moment in our time or the present state as being the most important because every one of them are equally important. From these two views, the Bible tells us that both of these views are established as truth. The past, the present, and the future are all important. The present, a man can change the future, but it cannot change the past. The future is contingent upon what we do right now. And so the Bible says that we must be taught to number our days, that we may apply our heart unto wisdom. It goes on to say that man that is born of a woman is of a few days, and they are full of of trouble and it is with that understanding saints of God that we can safely conclude up in here that every one of us has a past amen ain't God all right everybody sitting up in this sanctified church this morning has a past sometimes we act like we don't have one but guess what we do we could call some witnesses in here and give them the mic and ask them to testify about your past. <laughs> Ain't God all right? Yeah, everybody got one. Look at somebody say, you got one too. <laughs> hey, don't be looking at me all cross-sided and weak need, baby. Everybody in here has a past. <laughs> and some things we did in our past, we're not proud of. <laughs> some things we did in our past, we would not do again. <laughs> Can I get a witness? Some things we did in our past, we did it because we were ignorant at that time. But when you know better, you're supposed to do better. Yeah, you should never forget 
amen what you come through don't forget where you came from don't forget that you have a past even though your holy ghost feel now and saved and sanctified and dripping with anointed oil amen don't look down on these other folk who ain't there yet don't, don't look don't look down on the ones that ain't quite where you are y'all ain't gonna hear me because look how long it took you to get to where you are and guess what you still ain't where you supposed to be so keep your nose out of the air keep your head out the cloud keep your feet on the ground and walk a straight line and love everybody ain't god all right never get too high where you can't land the plane y'all don't hear me yeah don't ever get too high where you can't land that plane everybody has a pass amen if we put a bloodhound on you and gave him the authority to run back through your past that bloodhound would be able to find out and come back and give a report amen i did put one on a few folk and the bloodhound came and told me he said hi there he said all trails ain't on the track you got to realize people that everybody shouting right now then he used to shout you used to come to church and sit back amen quietly reserve it less so when i'm shouting now when you see my hands go up when you see my mouth say hallelujah when you see me rejoice in the lord you must understand that i have been through some stuff that's why i can tell you right now that god has been good to me he brought me out I wish somebody would shout that he brought me out. I got to preach. Good God of I. I didn't mean to preach this long, y'all. I didn't mean to mess up the service this way, but I got to tell you, we should never forget where we came from. Just high five somebody and tell them, please sit down. Please sit down. Yes. It is good. Yes, we have a past. <laughs> and it is the good and the bad decisions of our past, Lord, that shape us to the place where we are in the present. The past not only shapes, listen, our location of where we are, but it shapes the current condition of that location. Who we are right now has to do with what we chose and the decision mechanisms of our past. The Apostle Paul puts it this way. He, he calls all of these things of our past. He says these are the things which are behind. <laughs> it, it, it would suggest that something is behind us. <laughs> It, it, it would suggest that we are moving where things are in front of us. But there are some things behind us that we had to move beyond. And no matter how hard a man it was, or it may be, we had to learn how to move on. Even if your feelings got hurt, you had to learn how to move on. Even if your heart was broken, you had to learn how to move on even if you were disappointed in the actions of others you had to learn how to move on you had to learn eventually how to put those things behind uh, even though we have the memories that are embedded in our mind we still had to learn how to move on i'm preaching to folk that's been through divorces and and you had to learn you can testify how to move on you had to put your life back together again all of our past have people that we have lost along the way we cannot live in the past we we, we don't have to forget what happened but we do have to move on 
All of us have lost loved ones. Maybe it was your mother. Maybe it was your father. It could have been a spouse, a sibling, a relative, or a significant other. All sorts of people have died that we love. But they moved on and we must move on. We must learn how not to let the death of a loved one hinder our future progress. Because God wants us to move on. Now people will try to tell you to hang back. But you got to see something that life and time is progressive. And you can't sit around having a personal pity party when life is going on all around you. You got to learn how to move on. Because God still is on the throne. And God controlled the senses and the tenses. Jesus says in Revelation 1 and 8, he said, I am the Alpha and Omega. I am the beginning and the ending. The Lord who is and was and is to come. In other words, brothers and sisters, God is still the one that sits high and look low. God is still the one that controls our destiny. He's the only one that can be which was, which is, and which is to come. Hebrews 1 and 8 said that the Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the only one that transcends time, that can look into your past, that can see where you are in the present, and then make a way for you in the future. Ain't God all right? What I like about God is that God does not have to wait to see how circumstances come together. God does not have to wait to see how things are going to line up in your favor. He's the one that does the lining. He's the one that sets the circumstance in the place. In Romans 8 and 28 says, and because God is who he says he is, we know that all things are working together for my good. Ain't God all right? We have seen God do the miraculous. We have seen God do things in the past. In fact, our Bible is a record of all the history of what God has done in the past. The choir used to sing a song that I've seen God work. That means I've seen God do things in the past. In other words, God had worked some things out that I didn't know how I was going to get out. But he did it for me and I still can't explain how he did it. But all I can tell you is I've seen God work. Somebody asked a question one day. They said, Pastor Harmon, when are you going to tell your whole Old testimony. They don't understand that they don't have enough time to hear my entire testimony because what you see in me right now you don't know all the hell that I had to get through to get to where I am. Trust me this morning you better just rely on an improvised modified version because you just don't have the time for me to tell you all the sleepless nights. You don't have the time for me to tell you all the pain that I had to endure. You don't have the time for me to tell you the burden that was on my shoulder. If you only knew what I was going through, you would be in Whitfield right now. But it wasn't your grace that brought me this far. It was God's amazing grace. And when you see me stand 
happening here or when I look at you out there and see that God been good to you I'm not ashamed to let the world know if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side I would have lost my mind I would have already been crazy I probably would have killed some folks and been in prison right now but here I am today by the grace of almighty God anybody love the Lord ain't he all right I'm trying to close but I can tell you I've seen God work I've seen God do stuff that man just can't do I've seen God turn a no into a yes I've seen God make folk that did not even like me have to hire me I've seen God do stuff that man could not do I've been told no so many times that when I started praying I start saying God you know they already saying no but God say yes can I get a witness is there anybody up in pilgrim rest that's glad to know that when man said no and God God say yeah God's yes will trump a no God got the power to override a no God got the power to override a trial God got the power to override a sickness God got the power to override your trouble God got the power to override your stress he's got the the power to deal with your affliction he's got the power to deal with your sickness and you got to realize that no matter what the devil does he don't have the power to stop what God's gonna do I came to preach this morning to tell somebody that God will deliver I got to close y'all I done preached already too long but I need a witness in here that know that you know that he will deliver on time if I could call some witnesses I would call a Hebrew boy and tell you this morning that they were thrown in the fire every one of them were thrown in the fire but God got in the fire and they came out saying that he will deliver you if you ask old man Daniel will God deliver you ask Daniel about it he'll say yeah I know he will because I was in the line then all night long but God got down in the line then and made the lion roll up in a ball and I laid my head and used the line for a pillar because God will deliver I don't know who I'm preaching to up in Pilgrim Red but somebody been going through trouble somebody been dealing with trial I came to tell you lift up your head Oh ye gates and be ye ever lifted up he will deliver you you may want to ask how do you know that he will deliver I'm glad you asked because Paul said he already did it on carry Hill he did it in the past he delivered in the past on carry Hill when he hung on the cross and died for my sin he did it on the cross when the blood came streaming down he did it at the ninth hour when he cried out father forgive them for they know not what they do he delivered me on 
on that cross, but that's not the only praise. He delivered me because Paul said he does deliver. Every day of my life, when I get up out the bed, I say good morning, Thorn, but thank God I'm going to be delivered. He delivered me from all of my sickness. He delivered me from all of my worry. He delivered me from all of my fear. But that's not the only play that God will deliver. He will deliver in the future. That's why I keep saying you don't have to wait till the battle is over. You can go ahead and praise God. I'm thanking God not for what I'm in. I'm thanking God not for what I've been through. But I'm thanking God for where I'm going. Anybody in here can high five somebody and say, neighbor, come on and go with me if you really want to be free just hang around me i'm going somewhere i got a vision and i peeped into my future and guess what it look a whole lot better than my past my future is a whole lot better than my present if I had time I would preach a little while and tell somebody tell the devil to go to hell cause I ain't going tell the devil I'm coming out ain't God alright yeah I got to quit y'all I done preached too long but in your future you ought to see yourself take a moment right now and just close your eyes and see for yourself what do you see I heard the Lord put it this way that you're the head what do you see you're here what do you see you are above what do you see I see my bank account going up a little higher I see my credit coming together I see my bill being paid off what do you see touch somebody and ask them what do you see I don't know what do you see but what I see I see me wrapped up tied up and tangled up in Jesus yeah 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 somebody shout yeah yeah if you believe it and you're not ashamed lift your hand shout yeah 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 i see i see it i see it what do you see harvey i see ashante dancing again i see it i wish i had somebody up in here that could see what i see i see i see what do you see ask me what you see i see a bigger church i see i see it anybody see it i see it i said i see it if you believe it help ask somebody tell them i see it i see it i don't know what you see but i see i see it you coming out i see it yeah y'all gonna make me preach up in here 
weird. I see you are here. I see it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to stop. I'm not finished. But I'm going to stop. I see it. I see it. Every head bowed, every eye closed. God will deliver you. I don't know who it is in this house this morning. But you know who you are. You know who you are. Let's reach up and receive it today. Reach up and receive it today. God will. God will deliver. We have too many witnesses that know that they know. If he did it before, he'll do it again. Thank you. Father, today, somebody in this house need delivering. Somebody here need deliverance. I want to pray with you today. I want to pray with you. It's prayer time. Somebody here need deliverance. Somebody here need deliverance. Somebody here need deliverance oh deliver me deliver me right now somebody here needs a miracle somebody here needs a miracle somebody here needs a miracle oh bless me bless me right now somebody here needs an answer somebody here needs an answer somebody here needs an answer oh answer me answer me right now father at this altar oh glory to god hey shout out about coast oh yes glory 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 oh Oh, glory, glory, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Bless me right now. Somebody here needs a blessing. Somebody here needs a blessing. Somebody here needs a blessing. Oh, bless me. 
bless me right now. Do it now, Lord. You have delivered. You are delivering. And you will deliver. Do it now. All around this altar. The specifics of every individual. You know where we are in time. You know the way that we take. You know our ups and our downs. You're the one who supersedes the challenges of all the pressures of this world. We just need some relief. We just need some confirmation. Just need to know that you're with us. Just want to know that I'm not going through for no reason. That behind all of this, after this, something awesome is going to happen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Bless you. We praise you. We claim it today. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You can return to your seat now.